So it's getting really exciting. We were able to stick a lot of high-end features in this boat that are really only found in the higher-end bass boats. Specifically because this boat is going into a spot where there are serious horsepower and boat length size restrictions. That's the club. And those are clubs all over the US. And we are making an elite boat that's going to go out there and compete with the best of them. But the whole thing is this is a DIY structure. Anybody can make a boat like this. We're going to show you from ground up all those things we just previewed. But this video is specifically about the rod locker. Get a lot of questions about the rod locker. So I want to make an in-depth video showing you how we did it along with how we tied in the drain tubes that we put through the port foam, and we're gonna tie them into the middle channel that's already built into the boat. We'll show you a few extra things here, including how we made a rod grommet system out of Gator Skin's non-skid that actually fits in our little tight compact areas because space and rod length in general is a sore subject for tiny boats, but we get it done in the best, most efficient way. And this is one of the best videos I have for it. Starting now, check it all out. In this video, we are going to use the stock bench seats and add on to it and show you how to make a fairly good rod compartment from the side. This is a 14 foot deep V. Because it contours in the front to the V, that really changes how we're going to do things here in terms of rod storage. Whereas we have a little bit more leniency with a flat bottom and being able to stack a lot of rods together before uh, the boat even starts to contour, where the majority of the front is flat, you can stick a lot more rod tubes in that. But not so much here. I spaced it for 11. We can realistically only use 9. Because of how it tapers. I cut these out with a bimetal hole saw. Pretty easy kit to get. You can get a cheap kit at Harbor Freight and it'll do the job just fine. That part goes into our extension. The extension goes before. There needs to be a period where the rod is just straight before it tapers. You need to have a fairly, maybe a 1-2 to two foot gap there before the rod starts to contour. So your rods have something to be stable in while they're in transit. So we need to make the back a little bit farther behind the bench seat. Three layers total. Three sets of lines, two through the bench seat itself, and then one in the back before we refoam it all. Now these tubes, the bigger key to these is constant heat. The thing about PVC is if you heat it up, it stays hot. It doesn't like to let go of heat. So if you heat it up on one end and then you heat it up on the other end, it retains the heat. They don't, they don't, it doesn't just cool on the other end. And then you can heat along the down the side as needed. Constant pressure on the heat gun. Constant pressure and they will eventually curve and bend to your will. Just a, a time game here. The fact that it's so hot in my garage gives me a little bit of an advantage. This will probably be a lot harder to do in cold weather. We are sealing off the ends here with quad foam because we are going to be pouring in that pocket and then eventually in the second pocket. Dual pockets poured and that will solidify the tubes from ever moving again. Constantly running the tube through the heat so it stayed into like its bending apex. If you heated it too much though, then it would just fold and it was like a catastrophic failure and you had to kind of mold it with your hands or the tube just stayed messed up and that caused a lot of problems. Really it's recommended that you wear gloves uh, that because otherwise you're not gonna be able to handle the tube and move it through the, the pieces because it's a pretty tight fit. Again, we're only tapering it to the very end there. Only making sure it's gonna stay and then we're readjusting as, as needed. It is like stupid hot. Well, I'll show it to you once the third row is done, but the third row is just more or less more of this, more keeping the tubes as straight as possible until we absolutely, absolutely have to bend it. Now, before we pour the foam, we're gonna run drain tubes. We're gonna tactfully do this in each of these pockets, and they're gonna run all the way into the middle of the boat channel. Right underneath the subfloor, there is a channel drain, and that's where we're gonna run the tubes to, and th in theory, these tubes will help uh, bleed out any sort of water that gets stacked in there because water will get stacked in there. It's inevitable. And how you prepare for that determines how long your foam will last. Thirty ml of pour foam. 
50 50 split we're gonna go ahead and seal these tubes right in so we don't have to worry about this crap later on the more we finagle with everything the more complicated this stuff gets because it's put here we're gonna leave this here we're gonna go in there and tactfully cut it at its lowest spot Ooh, that's hot it's building heat that's some serious heat this should be pretty well solidified in there with this core foam once we pour in here then they're really gonna be solidified okay so this is just where we're at we are at the point where we're gonna install these makeshift diy drain Drain, they're like secondary compartment drains. We're gonna run these into the subfloor. Do that. Some drill bits. We're we running these tubes that I so graciously ran down in here. We're we running those into the middle of that subfloor. And so all the tubes will be collecting right in the middle of the subfloor, and we will seal them off right before we pour foam into this whole thing. Those small black drain tubes are, that's just like garden hose and I flattened it out with a rivet and a heat gun. So just pretty tactfully did that. And the other stuff is that same kind of water line you run to like a water station in your house. But they'll all work just for simple drainage. So those are just at the absolute worst, like, scenario of, an, of, of another failure of the dry hat system from like a massive flood or death but at least we'll have some backup source where this thing won't flood and absolutely ruin everything stuff might get wet in here in the in the event of an absolute takeover of the dry hatch slip but really hard for it to ever do anything else that way Okay, so it bubbled pretty good there, which we are happy about because that was the plan. But we were, it really took part there. Like serious amounts of it bubbled in there. That's good. Because if that whole cavity fills with foam, that's a pretty good cavity of foam. It will fill, it'll, oh man. Ooh, that's hot. That's like burning hot to the touch. And I kind of put a little bit of pressure on that so it doesn't bloat. You can see it physically bloating right there. Now, crap. I'm gonna put my foot in there. Ow. And a step in there. Stepping in there to physically kind of keep it from bloating that aluminum. It didn't do that bad of a job because it's a pretty. 0.063 aluminum is pretty thick, but if we don't do something, it'll, it'll start getting away from us. You can feel that's like serious amounts of heat. You can just feel it, it was all like a heat pocket in there was <laughs> crazy. We initially had nine holes, I made another four to give it different spacing and to also possibly store extra rods because you can store two rods to a tube if you do it tactfully. But the whole idea of using those grommets we use in the other boats, that's just not even an option now. Those grommets we used to use in the other boats aren't even really an option now with, with spacing that tight. And I also don't really like them. They look really nice, but they're kind of, I don't know, the way that you attach them are kind of, it's kind of crappy. Now, there's a better way to do it. And so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna try this with gator skins, uh, the non-skid. We're gonna go ahead and do one side, and then we are going to double back it, uh, one on each side. So the 3M tape stuck to each other, that'll never come off. And we'll, we marked it in the front, that way we can go ahead and mark it in the back and drill completely through it so it's perfectly centered on each hole. And then we will start it with uh, you know, a utility knife. So it'll pretty much be its own little separate crop.
so it works pretty good. Works as advertised. It'll keep your rods in any position you want, the reels in any position you want, so they won't sit on each other or ding each other. And maybe it works a little too good, but it'll be fine. This can something. Maybe if I would to do it over again, I would have used non skid on the top and then maybe gator skin soft touch on the bottom. It would have given it a little bit more pliable surface, or I would have made the holes bigger, and that would have also help with like some of the leniency but that stuff's pretty thick it's like the best grommet ever your rods are never going to go anywhere in, in transit I went back out there and restarred them so they are tighter in so there's a lot more than the initial initially I did them like this where they're pretty thick and that may be a little too stiff so I'm going back in there and cutting these in half like so so you so these are much more pliable when they're thinner which is good because that double back non skid is tough it's very tough and you will notice immediately so this will come out a lot easier than what than what we saw in the initial demo with the initial run is so we're going to and we're just in the process of kind of sanding and cleaning this up a little bit and then we'll spray that off and make it all nice and black and but only after these are the exact color they need to be which they match the rest of the white here which we'll do that's not very hard but just know if you overcook them you can just sand them down with like some 220 grit i would recommend wet sanding it's better this spot here like I tried to cap it off and then when I put the pour foam in, the pour foam stuck to the back and then once it, it heats up and expands and then it pulls and it pulled it in, it pulled it back in there. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do about that. I'll figure it out. That sucks though. It expands and then it contracts once it cools. It kind of does this little shrink right at the very end, loses a little bit of mass and then it pulled it in. So we'll just have to reattach that, but that's the only thing. That's not terribly hard to fix, but uh, is the nice properly spaced rod locker. This is a pretty nice space rod locker. This will hold quite a few rods. Now we'll be skinning it with turf and we'll be making it look all nice and pop. We'll run some LEDs all the way down the strip so they kind of light up the entire locker. We'll do that with the other side. This frame's floating here. Down here we have these two brackets that were part of these little side little boxes before. And we're gonna use that to run up here and attach uh, leads right up in here which that'll really really solidify and stiffen this up and we did that over there and that hinge doesn't move at all so we'll do that here before we really finalize the hatch we start doing the hatches we will start to hatch this thing up here next 